Every year, tens of millions of Americans find themselves having to care for a loved one. And caregiver is a role many of us aren't expecting to take on. And whether you're able to plan in advance or are taken by surprise, it's undoubtedly a stressful time for everyone. But the only way to get real insight into caregiving is to live it. And that's why I'm talking to today's guest, Sean Yovanov. Sean's oldest son was diagnosed with leukemia on his 21st birthday. One month later, Sean's wife learns she has breast cancer. But suddenly finding himself the caregiver for two family members is only the beginning of Sean's story. It's time for real talk about the struggles caregivers face and some of the best resources available to help. I'm Tori, and this is The TMI Show. Caregiving takes many forms, from helping with day-to-day -day chores like shopping and laundry, to suddenly having to become pretty much a medical professional. To say nothing of the sometimes sensitive help patients can need. Diapers, bedpans, wound care, you know the drill. And how are caregivers supposed to manage their own lives with work, partners, kids, and pets, while taking on so many extra and important responsibilities? I've got Sean Yovanov with me, and he's here to tell me how he handled the stress caregiving for his wife and son and also how he managed after his own cancer diagnosis. Sean, thanks for joining us today. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm uh, 57 years old. I live in Northern Ohio and uh, avid gardener, avid Michigan uh, University sports fan, and actually a cancer survivor and a cancer caregiver. So just starting from the beginning, what were your emotions like when your son was diagnosed with leukemia? What made him see a doctor? Well, uh, you know, obviously fear, of course, was first what because i knew the leukemia diagnosis wasn't very good it was his actually 21st birthday and just wasn't feeling right he was off kilter so we went to the campus doctor and when the campus doctor seen him he noticed that his skin tone was extremely extremely pale um and basically sent him right straight to try health uh, emergency because simply based on his color it just was that dramatic and his hemoglobin was extremely low and that's when they started uh you know working on finding out if it was in fact leukemia or not which which it was so when did you and your wife first start making care plans there really was no time once he got diagnosed and we talked to the doctors we are uh, about an hour from cleveland clinic which obviously one of the best hospitals in the world. So it's sort of a no planning situation. We came home, grabbed some clothes and headed to Cleveland. Now, in the midst of this, your wife was diagnosed with cancer. How long after Patrick was she diagnosed and how did you handle this news? It was almost a month, a little bit more than a month when she was diagnosed and she called and I could tell that she was, you know, upset. Truly thought she was going to tell me we had lost my son just by the way she was acting and her emotions on the phone. So uh, anything that she would have told me other than that, you know, I'm gonna be good with it. So, you know, she told me she had breast cancer. It's like, well, you're gonna battle it together and we'll get through it. I mean, your outlook is incredible. I mean, you just became the caregiver for both your son and your wife. Like, how did you manage? Like, what were some of the biggest challenges you faced? Really, in the beginning, it wasn't too bad because everything was set with surgeries and Patrick had, you know, basically three month protocol in the hospital with his leukemia. So in the very beginning, it wasn't too bad. It was more once they got out, you know, who's going to what doctor at what time and on what day and what do I got to take off work to make it there? And, you know, that was the, the most difficult. And as you're managing all of that, did you manage to take care of yourself and relieve some of the stress of being a caregiver? Yeah, I mean, you didn't, I mean, I have a very, very, very big family. So my stress relief is really just calling them, talking to them, keeping them informed on how my family's doing. Uh, a lot of people came in and cleaned the house and I would come home and have suppers on my, you know, counter and uh, just a big benefit they threw for us. So everything they did for us was, over the top, really. How did your cancer diagnosis affect the family? What did you learn about caregiving when you became the patient? Well, mine was a little different because I, uh, my cancer, I didn't have to go through chemo. Mine was more of a surgical 
thing with the kidney cancer. So mine was, my recovery was a lot simpler than theirs. All I had to rest and then get up and walk and basically your post-surgery type of scenario. And how is your health now and your wife and son? We've all been cancer free for over a decade. Uh, Patrick graduated on time. Chris is in semi-retirement. I'm working the same job that I worked for 26 years. That's incredible. That's incredible news. I'm so happy to hear that. How did you decide to become involved in the Cleveland Clinic's mentoring program for cancer patients um, and their caregivers? I was actually at the clinic with Patrick in one of his post uh, leukemia segments and they had a flyer in there and I started reading it and with all the support that I got from my family and communicating, I thought, well, this is something simple that I can do to help out pay it forward. And can you explain a little bit about what you do with the mentoring program? Basically what I do is I uh, tell them my story first. Um, I mentor caregivers and cancer patients and try to convey to them, you know, what they might be seeing and what they might experience come coming up through the chemo process that that person might be going through. Uh, again, I try to stress to, you know, have things there uh, that they like to eat, if they feel like they want to eat. Sometimes they just, they just want to talk. They just want to, you know, hey, how can, how can I be at peace? How can I make my, you know, son be at peace? Um, you know, what can we do together and why we still have this time? and you know, try to walk them through uh, communication on finding their goals with them and, and vice versa. If you were forced to narrow it down, what are three of the most important things a caregiver needs to know? I think communication is, is first and foremost to find out you know, how they're feeling on that particular day and, and what their goals might be coming up and what they wanna accomplish and communication with the doctor uh, to see what the next steps are gonna be in their protocol. Next would be patients because sometimes they're gonna be feeling sore, tired, scared for that matter. Sometimes things are directed, you might take things that are directed to you because you're tired and you've got to separate that and know and understand that it's not directed at you, it's just the way it is. And and third is probably the organization. You gotta you gotta know who's going where or what when and what's gonna happen. Uh, Sean, thank you so much for speaking with us today. I am so happy to hear that you and your family are healthy and thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you so much for having me. Caregivers overall mental and emotional health is so important to being the best care you can. Try not to forget yourself during this time. Just finding a moment to take a few deep breaths and center can be the difference between a good day and a hard day. If you wanna learn more about resources for caregivers from how to foster emotional wellness to finding help for daily living, check out the links below. Thanks for watching the TMI show. Subscribe for more.